everyone, this is the Villains Man. I'm JVD. I'm Somali. And today we're talking about background and incorporation. Um, background and incorporation to me, and especially with 5e, is uh, kind of very important. And I didn't play 4th edition. Did you play 4th edition? Um, I played the starter box. Did it have anything like this? Um, no. Okay, and that's what's great about 5e. Um, ever they, since they made backgrounds an actual part of the game. It, and it's really good for new players. It is. Which, that, I think that's the best thing about 5e, is that it is easy for new players to learn. Yeah. And then when you got a new player that it's not, um, well, obviously they're not experienced or new, but um, that is worried about a backstory, because this is the thing as a new player. I remember the first time I had played, and I played with uh, AB, he's the guy that taught me how to play. He was, he's been playing since he was a child. And God, what? Uh, he's just turned 48. So he's been playing since like the 80s, like early 80s. Mm. So and uh, to play with him and then like his friend Robert, when I, they were so experienced and to hear their backgrounds just kind of blew my mind because I would have never thought as a player to be that creative. And don't get me wrong, I, I think I'm a creative person. Yeah. But to take it to the level that they were because I was so new. And I feel that being a new player, between uh, the Player's Handbook, which we have out, and Xanathar's Guide, there's a lot that gives you options for a new player to build a background without having to go into crazy detail. Oh, yeah. Um, it for, actually fills in the detail for you if you're using Xanathar's. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, and you can build upon that. Oh, yeah. Now, me, I just kind of use this as a basis, and it never really plays out to me in my game. I don't, I don't try to play it out. Yeah. I usually come up with my own backstory and let it play out itself. Yeah. Well, those that are in there just for people that they can't write a background. They know nothing about, like, they don't, they're there to play a game more than they are a character. Yeah, I, I agree. Or they're just new. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that you just mentioned that, and I never thought about that. You know, it, th this is really good for the people that are just there to play the game, not um, a player that is there to immerse themselves in the game like we do. Yeah. And some people, they just want to play a game. As long as everyone's having fun, I mean, more power to you. Yeah. Now, um, in the player's handbook, you've got uh, quite a few backgrounds, which we're looking yeah. at the first one, which is Acolyte. Yeah. And which they all give you a feature, a little feature for your class. Um, they give you uh, some starting equipment, some skills to pick from. There's even a thing that for uh, customizing your background, which I do not suggest if you're a newer player to do. No. Just kind of follow the guidelines. I think out of all the characters I've played in 5e, I think I've customized one. I think I just use usually what's there. What I like to do, of course with DM approval, or if I am the DM, I'll say Yes, always this. get DM approval. Yeah. I, I just like get the bases. Like If you get languages, you get the languages. Tools, you get the tools, equipment, you get whatever equipment. But because of the skill proficiencies, just grab the two you want. You don't have to get just those two. And and that, that makes quite a bit of sense, yeah. Like, Acolyte, for like a cleric, mm -hmm. you get two skills that you can already pick. Yeah, and then a lot of times that they do they do collide with the classes yeah. like that. It's specifically so, the classes they're made for. And when you say that, that's that's kind of the one thing I do. I don't, when I make character, I don't go for skills first out of my yeah. class. I wait to see what I get out of my background, whichever yeah. background I choose. And then, like, if you play a class with few skills that they can choose from, and if your background is thematic to the class, then you probably get two of those skills already. Yes, exactly. But um, like we had said um, in the player's handbook, uh, you have you know your background. They all have features and uh, some suggested characteristics. Each yeah. thing's got a personality to trait, an ideal, a bond, or a flaw. And then when you move to Xanathar's Guide, which um, I have not really read through, but Smiley has here, we have uh, I've read everything. Sad. Yes, yeah, he reads a lot, which <laughs> I uh, which is good. Because I hardly ever play, and now that I'm playing more, I've really got to get into all this. But um, you've got views of the world. Um, we got homeland thing. There's sworn enemy here in the Rangers, and uh, it's more to help you build up on your character, yeah. like thematically and story wise. It's a. It, it honestly, I love those tables. Yeah, they go over the classes, the backgrounds, just random information things. They even have tables for names in the back if you can't come up with a name. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, that's what I think's best about Xanathar yeah. God. Random name, boom, right there. Which I've got one on my phone, but that's yeah. really neat. Honestly, every game I've done, I kept that in my bag in case somebody asked me for a name, but someone I did not thought Oop, of. Yet. There it is, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and uh, it, it, it's really good. Now, the question is, and what we're here to talk about today is as a DM, how much of this do you expect a player to incorporate into their story? Or would you much rather them. Uh, 
incorporate their own background they create because this is just basically who you are you should write your life out yeah. the way you want it which this is a good way to start but as a dm it's more of what do you prefer to use i would also like to add to that question like like incorporating those backgrounds that your players give you into your storyline yeah i don't think that's what i'm getting at because like when i do the when i make a character um I like the personality traits, the ideals, the bonds and flaws. I try to play those. I, I do try, too. but I'll, most of the time because I'm so such an experienced player, I have those in my mind anyways as I write my character. And yeah. you know, and most of the time I will pick my background based on how I picture my character before yeah. I even pick any of those. So I try to pick what yeah. suits him best and how I've designed them. I, I have the. Like, if you look at the charts for the backgrounds, their main things are one for every alignment. Pretty much, yeah. And the main problem is that I do not think of a character's alignment first. I only think of alignment after I'm completely done with I completely agree with that because, to me, I think if you you focus on yeah. your, your character's alignment for their background, you're going to tend to build that character around that alignment. And you should really focus on building the character you want and then decide what its alignment is. I actually had the bad habit of not writing down an alignment until I'm asked about it. Well, and it yeah. seems in 5e, you know, alignment's not really such a big issue. Uh, there are certain items, like the Sun Sword. Yes. It requires yes. specific, like, th that's only really it. Specific attunements. That's it. it. Which kind of sucks, because I think, yeah. to me... Alignment is a very important thing to a background. It is, because it writes down the measure the world sees you as. Yes, and it's how you also see the world. Yeah. Like in 5e, um, and, and this is one thing I've always asked um, characters that would play like a paladin, like, okay, like, are you lawful good? I, it depends on the god. Well, yeah, to a me, lot it, of times it is. I'm a pa my paladins are always lawful. Mm -hmm. Because they have to follow a strict code of ethos, a strict yes. tenets. So lawful just fits for me. Yeah, and, 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 to, and to me it should because, okay, just because you worship a god that's, say, chaotic good, you would yeah. still be lawful because you're following in those tenets yeah. of chaos. Yeah. like whatever, As much as that sounds funny. Yeah, you know. Well, well you've, like the gods give you laws that you have to abide by as a paladin. Yes. They're under, like, the header for every paladin archetype. You, the exact ones you must follow. Yeah. That is such a strong roleplay tool. Mm -hmm. No one ever gets, no one ever thinks about it. No, it, no, Very not few people ever do. And to me, it, the one thing that's important to me about alignment with background and building all this stuff is, as you as a DM, it gives you a lot to play off of. Because um, to go back to three point five, when I had started, you know, Palin had to be awful good. As a DM, you get to sit and judge that character's actions to see if they're even worthy of all their paladin abilities. Yeah. Because I have struck somebody from their abilities before. And, and see, the thing I hate about that, though, is that a lot of times people don't look at it from the viewpoint of the god in question. Like what? Does neutral gods not get paladins? Do, do evil it's true, gods, yeah. yeah. Like they have the Hellbreaker, I mean, the Oathbreaker and the Hell Knight. Mm -hmm. and four fallen paladins. Yeah, well, Just, you, you said yeah. Blackguard. Yeah. So. Yeah, Black artists have Oathbreaker, yeah. And those were like the things that like if you were evil, you had to fail at being a paladin of a good god and then take up the mantle of a black of a dark god. But to me, here, here's my thing though, to, yeah. to, to watch a character based on a paladin, especially if they will give you a rich background. Yeah. You know, we're, we're here talking about how this is all good for good roleplay material. That gives that character something to roleplay towards too. Yeah. For instance, I have a friend Kyle who uh, who's been on some of our games and our this podcast. Which my complaint is more along the line of lore wise, on actual yes. games or anything. Well, that, that's what ta that's yeah. that's your job as a DM to read up on the lore yeah. for your character's gods. But he he's always wanted to play a fallen paladin yeah. that's trying to restore himself, which I've done. But it, to me, it's so much better role playing wise. It gives oh, your God, it gives you an amazing experience. For yes, you yeah, and, and and that's what turned out mm -hmm. to because. I think they were like level five or six and i did i just because of one thing they did i stripped them of their powers and it gave them something to latch onto because they didn't yeah. want that but for a role playing opportunity based on his background he tried to bring himself back to the good graces of his god to get his abilities back yeah. so but and it's me and, and that's all based on background that's why yeah. i think that alignment and, is and such an is important thing for background. an in-game story driven by the background now um speaking of how much? How do you prefer your characters' backgrounds to be? Do you expect do you 
do you like to have a character that gives you something to fit into their game? Or I do you love like something that's just real loose. I absolutely love fitting people's stories to my games. I absolutely love it. Do you have a limit to what you allow? Do you, like, well, uh, you I'm first level sense. and I care, killed a. It uh, has to make sense. Yes, it has, it to, has make to make sense. sense. Which is what me and James talk about. Your backgrounds have to make sense. It can't. I actually had the conversation with one of my players in a previous game that he wanted to slay four dragons. One gets away, scared of him, and not like baby dragons, like full grown into dragons at level one. And like his, that's why his god chose him to be his champion. And yeah, and he's that, first level. That, that's boring. It sounds awesome, but it's boring. How can your character get better if he's one shotting ancient dragons? Yeah. But see, here's yeah. a story, a background for say since we're that I had that was almost the same thing. Um, I played a paladin whose family, their bloodline was cursed, and how it worked was um, they were cursed by a a bloodline of dragon. I think it was red. If you want to say cursed to be aware of Panthers, I was going to call you Kettle Moore. But, <laughs> but, uh, and, I love those books. And part of his story was, was he first level? Yes. Had he killed a dragon? No. But he was aware that there was a dragon hunting him down. Because that's what, there was a rivalry between that clan see, of dragons. See, that would be good. Because then you get like the cult of that dragon coming yes. in. Yes. And see, and, and the thing was, it was technically, uh, my father had killed this dragon's parents, yes. and I wore the cloak that he took from their hides. Yeah. And uh, I knew that one of their children had escaped. It was the only one that had left when he had led this slaughter to their family, and it was missing an eye. And that's how I would know the day I fought a red dragon, that would be the one that was after me. So does it is it epic? Yeah. yeah. But... Is it fittable enough that it's first level that it's yeah. not going to cause conflict? No. No, absolutely. And the thing was, I never got to fight it. <laughs> so that is the only bad thing about it back Did that happen like Brawl Drag? <laughs> no, 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 no. no is it that you never fought it that you fought it too soon? <laughs> yeah, way too soon. Because I, I was expecting that to be like the epic climax of the storyline. <laughs> no, but you know, it was enough that it, that it made sense yeah. without being crazy. That it fit for me being first level because I had never met any of these dragons. It, you know, my, it was a story from my father yeah. that he had passed down to all of us children. I was the youngest. Yeah. And that it gave the DM something to work with because I made it so, well, it was one of the dragon's children. So yeah. it could a it could have been a young dragon by the yeah. time I admit it because my father, by the age I was, I was young. Let's just say I'm 20. My father might have been 50. So that dragon could still be a younger dragon and be suitable for a low-level party. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I left it open enough for the DM to interpret it how he wanted to, yeah. and it could be any size dragon. I think it's about 200 years between young and adult. So, yeah. and the thing is, like, I, I didn't say that, well, the, dra the baby dragons were this old, you know. It yeah, left it open. The only reason why I know that is because it's relevant to Out of the Abyss. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that in mind as we're playing this. Like um, the eight, the, how fast dragons age? The exact brackets of years. Now, um, now talking background, like you had mentioned, you know, for these books for players, that um, these are good for players that just want to play the game, not immerse themselves. Yeah. Do you search for something out of what your character used background wise for them in game? I never make decisions for my players. No, 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 not decisions. For instance, okay. Um, what I'm here, a hermit. Yeah. Okay, so a hermit, rogue, adversary. Say I don't use this as a player. Yeah. But you know that it's there. If you give me nothing, I will I will start dropping stuff in. Okay. That's why access has been going on with like Grom and mm -hmm. them. I didn't actually have, we started our game on the fly because another game canceled that day. And like we didn't have backstories or anything written up. We was like, you wanna play? Yeah, let's play. You got a book? Yeah, I got a book. And that's how our Out of the Abyss game started. Pretty much. And like, it's fun. I love it. If you haven't watched it on YouTube, yeah. before, you're probably watching this. Yeah, it, it would only make sense if you did. I mean, come on. <laughs> but to me as a team, I really like when a character gives me, uh, a player gives me something yeah. open enough for them to add to the game. But here's the thing. I also prefer that when I, okay, most of the time I do not tell my players what I have going on. 
because I don't want players to fit their background to my game. I won't. I like in a general sense of what the story well, is. Well, I do that. So I can make a character that won't break the game or be so far removed from it doesn't make sense for them to be here. Well, like, okay, for instance, yeah. you're running out of the abyss. I would not tell my characters I was running out of the abyss. I would give them the start. I would say I'm running a... Which I guess out of the abyss would be hard because you're captured. Which I would actually probably run that to a game where you would get captured Well, to start. I would say you're running... It's an under it's an underdark campaign where you crash it by drow and trying to make it to the surface. Yeah, because I wouldn't want everybody to be like, all right, well, I'm going to play Paladin because yeah. we know there's demons. I, I don't want my characters to have yeah. that advantage. I want them to not be adaptive. I don't want like them to adapt would... in the beginning. I want them to be able to adapt throughout the yeah. game to help tell the story. Uh, see, just like that one little two-sentence two like thing is all someone needs to make a character that will fit in the storyline. Yeah. Like, all right, you're, you're playing, I'm playing Underdark. Like, the Underdark Scout's really good. But it's I'm also will be invisible to fucking everybody. Yeah, wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe let's not do that, or maybe let's talk to the DM first, see see if we can just work it where I want. Yeah, and always talk to the DM about your background, because here's the thing: harass or DM. I support that. Yeah, I, I, and as From a DM, personal I, I experience, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and the here's entirety a... of the ancient war reborn. Oh entirety. boy. Even now, even the game's over, yeah. I'm still harassed. And you're running the game. I know, right? Yeah, you're, you're harassing me halfway uh, through your game, and I'm not even getting ready to run the next game. Yeah. But, you know, and like I said, harass your DM. Because even as a background, and, and to me, even flavor-wise, even despite the background, your DM may let you change things up in your yeah. class with something from another class. Yeah, as I'm long fine. as it's not completely over, as long as it's good flavor. I'm, I'm all about that, too, because yeah. it helps tell your story. My viewpoint is, as long as everybody's able to have fun, I don't care. Uh, yeah, pretty much. And as long as it's not broken. Yeah. Now, no better game. Yeah. Because if it gets too broken, it's not going to be fun anymore. Yeah, like Boomstalker, yeah. like we just talked about. Yeah. Oh, is that what it's called? No, they changed the name three times. Ah, I can't tell you what it is. It's like called, like, the Underdark Scout, then, like, some kind of stalker. It's Gloomstalker. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Jerry. So, but, but you know, that's the thing. Background is important. Yeah. And it gives you so much. It, you can make an entire campaign based Around on one person's background. Yeah, just I have based on that. a background. Like currently um, with uh, the game, my buddy Kyle's running, I played this character called Lynch. And the thing was, I gave him something so simple yeah. that he built the entire game around. And it also allowed him to take that and tie it to everybody else's yeah. story without none of us knowing. Yeah. Which is really awesome because sometimes as DM, that's all you need to do to write a campaign. And the thing is, that character's background might change the entirety of your entire campaign. Yeah. So remember that. Do not be afraid to bring anything to your DM as it relates to your character before the game starts. Even if something happens mid-game, like just when the session's over, talk to your DM, DM about it. If it's something that like you didn't realize or something along the way. Yeah, yeah. Vice versa. Be because here's the thing. You can always add lib stuff as the yeah. game goes on because things change. Things come up that and sometimes like you said, don't expect. Like, I, I put the fun of the game before every other aspect of it. Before. I agree, yes. Because there's no point in playing the game unless you're having fun. Yeah. But like, get, like fun before the story, the story before any mechanics. Yes. And so on and so forth. But as a DM, both of us, and I think I speak for us both, Always bring a background. And if you're a player that doesn't care about background, you do not realize what you're missing. I assume most players that don't have a background that they're there to play are really missing out on the fun. Oh, yes. Which, the thing is... Sec, whenever you notice, like, hints to your background in the storyline, you, you always get giddy. And, and, also as a, and also, as a player, it gives you something to pick up on. Like today, in yeah. that game, when, when you said this, I'm like, oh, this is tied to me. And then my guy went from not caring... Because he yeah. didn't care where they were because he realized that the pretty lady was just some freaking ghost. To yeah. when he just seen that one symbol. Well, actually, it was the uh, riddle, which really tipped me off. Yeah. When I said, it's nothing. If you, if he was, if he was playing, if, like, you were paying attention, like, in the last session. Yeah. Like, they sung a song about the nothing. Yeah, and then there's the thing. My character at that time did not care. Yeah. Because he's like, oh, okay, there's no lady here. And then that thing's what tipped me off. And so that's the good thing about having a background. Yeah. So remember, if you're a player that doesn't have a background, doesn't care about it, you're wrong. You should change. But then again, it's your game. You play how you want. I love for DMs to incorporate the background fully into their stories. I do too. And if a character doesn't give you a background, don't force them to our one because they won't work. It would end badly. 
<laughs> but I think mm. if you do that for a character and you hit around, eventually yeah. they grow to like it. Yeah. Because eventually I if think they catch on. I would say sit them down and help them write one out. Yeah. Or come up with a background. But I, I, yeah. Essentially, that's what I do with all my players. Yeah. Look at Ord. How much we built yeah. on Ord just from a small thing. Yeah. I mean, look how much you had for your character before they even started. Oh, yeah. I actually gave him, like, I think it was like a three-page thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and it wasn't anything big. It was like, I ran. Mm -hmm. I was on a boat. But for three pages. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm here and I'm a smith. Well, this, this, this one's in town. So we can work yeah. this, this for your background. So remember, don't be yeah. afraid. Have a good background. Oh, yeah. With that, I'm JBD. I'm smiling. Keep the dice rolling, guys.